Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the recitation 0D. In this recitation, we'll cover data reading and saving of NPY, NPZ, and CSV files. We'll also introduce the PyTorch dataset and the data loader. So, uh, yeah. So firstly, let us take a look at reading and saving NumPy files. The .NPY format is the standard binary file format in NumPy. Uh, it is used to persist a single NumPy array on the disk. It stores all of the shape and D-type information in it. We can use NumPy save to save it into NPY format. When dealing with a NumPy array that has a varying row size or arrays of arbitrary objects, we can set a low PICO to true to save the object array. The NPZ format is for saving multiple NumPy arrays. An NPZ file is a zip file containing multiple NPY files. So we need to save the array under the corresponding name. Uh, you may also need to submit CSV file in the homework part two. So you may need to read in sample submission file and write your prediction to the corresponding index. Pandas to CSV, uh, you can use pandas to CSV to save your file. It will create a separate column of indexes. We can set the index to false if the index is already defined in the data frame. And you can use the read CSV to read in your sample submission. Let's talk about the data set and data loader. As you know, our data is generally an array of input output pairs. We can use the data set and the data loader in PyTorch to deal with the data. Data set is used to pre-process the data and load single data pair. When defining a data set, there are three class methods that uh, you have to implement. Uh, the initialization, the length, and the get, get atom. You may also implement call it function in your data set to apply some kind of operations to the data sample. We'll cover it later. So in the initialization method, we load data into the data set class. In this example, the X and Y are NumPy arrays loaded previously. And in the lens function, we usually return the lens of the labels, which is Y in this case. It may depends on the task. Uh, in the get item function, uh, the index is given and we should return the X, Y pair corresponding to that index. The get head function will be called a lot of times. So please make sure that um, you do as little work in this function to reduce overhead. And after we define the data set class, we can use data loader to group the input output pairs into batches. In this example, if CUDA and GPU are available in your environment, the CUDA variable will be true and we can set the num workers to eight. The my data set, well, um, it's the data set class we defined before. And the train loader arguments is a dictionary of arguments for the data loader. Let's briefly go through these arguments. So the first one is, is shuffle. Shuffle will shuffle the X, Y pairs in the data and you should set shuffle as true in the data loader, in the training data loader. And you should set the shuffle to false in the validation and test loader. You'll learn how, uh, the reason for shuffling in the following class. And the batch size is the size of mini batches. If you set the batch size to like 256, the data loader will group 256 XY pairs and feed them into the model to run one computation. And the num workers, uh, it is the number of subprocess to use for data loading. If you set num workers to zero, it means that the data will be loaded in the main process. And you can also set the pin memory to true if the CUDA is available. It will make the data loading faster, but use more RAM. Okay, let's go to the notebook to see some examples. Okay, so let's see uh, the examples uh, so that uh, we are more clear about the concepts that we learned in the slides. So starting on with uh, reading, writing, and saving data, um, uh, for the NumPy files, we here uh, first create a NumPy array and we can save this in the save it, save this using NumPy save. Um, we need to give a file name and the array and we can load it using np.load. 
uh, if we want to uh, say a list of objects, we need to specify the data type as object. And to save this particular uh, array, we need to use NumPy save again. But since this is a list of objects, we need to specify allow pickle equals to true. To, uh, to read this particular NumPy file, we can use NumPy load again. But since it's a pickle file, we need to provide the argument allow pickle equals to true again. So let's see. Uh, yeah. So the first array was a simple three cross three array uh, matrix of ones. And the second one is a um, list of lists. Similarly, for the npz files, we can save the npz files using np.cz. And here, the arguments is the file name and the arrays that we want to save. save. So here, we have provided the two arrays that we cre created earlier. To load, these, uh, to load this file, we need to use npload. And since one of these files that we, one of the arrays that we have given here is a pickle, uh, is an array of objects, we need to specify allow pickle equals to true here as well. To read a specific array, we need to access it like so. So let's print and check, and then we see that again, uh, this is out. Similarly, for uh, CSV, we first import pandas, pd, and we create a data frame uh, as so, pd.dataframe, and then uh, we can set uh, index and labels. So this particular uh, thing will be used when we are uh, generating the labels for our homework part twos. So the labels out of our models. And uh, first we'll be creating the output and then we'll have indices and the corresponding labels to that indices. And uh, something like this. So this is uh, NP, NP range we use here and we have uh, indices from range zero to 10 and uh, the labels between 10 to 19. To save this output, we can use the two CSV method from uh, pandas. And uh, we can set index to false here if we do not want. Um, so what happens if we set the index to true is basically we'll have this extra column of indices. But since we are already having a column with which says ID, we do not want this extra thing. So we can set this to false. Yeah, moving on uh, to custom data set and data loader. First, we'll be seeing a very basic example. Here we have defined X and Y, as this is a list, which is a list of numbers. So here X is a list of numbers and Y is again a list of numbers. Uh, we can create data using uh, the zip function. So that essentially pairs up the X and Y values um, like so. And the length data is basically the length of the data, which is 10 in our case. Moving on to write our own data set class. First, we'll have to import data set and data loader from torchutils.data. To define our own class, we have uh, we, we do it as follows. So we are creating a class called my data set. And this data set class is basically uh, inheriting the torch data set class. And here we are uh, defining like three methods. The init method initializes x and y's, x and y's. The length method returns the length of the data set, and this can essentially be length of x's or length of y's, one of the two. Both, both, of, it, both of them work in this case. Uh, get item essentially returns the uh, specific item at given index i. So here we return the tuple. Uh, X and Y at a given index I. We create an instance of this uh, my data set class by giving the X and Y's that we had defined earlier. And we, okay, yeah. So one from the first item in this uh, data set is basically zero and 10, which is a pair of X and Y value. Coming on to data loader, um, Data loader essentially gives us an iterable over the data set that we have defined. This is the most basic way of using it. So data loader to the data loader, we are giving the data set. And upon iterating, uh, let's see what we get. So we see that here, the all the data samples that are fetched from data loader are of 
batch size one that is each each data sample has one x and one value a one y value and it's all sequential the data is not shuffled at all moving on we can provide extra arguments uh, so here we set the batch size to two doing so we see that now the data samples that are fresh are batch of size two but still they are sequential so to shuffle the data we can specify this extra argument shuffle equals to true and we can also and use enumerate this will be useful when we want to know that which batch are we processing so here we have written index so it will be helpful to know and print that uh, which batch are is my model processing right now so if we see this again the batch size is 2 but now the data is no more sequential so it's randomly shuffled neater way of writing the arguments that we want to give the data loader is using dictionary so in the dictionary we can provide all the arguments that we had mentioned above and then these arguments can be passed to data loader like so so the data loader to the data loader we pass the data set and the data loader arguments uh yeah and we can pass the data loader and iterate over it moving on let's see some examples where we where the input is images for this we'll be using torch data set and data loader for this we'll be using uh, the fashion ms data set which comes out of the box from torch vision package from torch and uh this is basically a data set containing of fashion objects 10 fashion objects and each image is of size 28 cross 28 so for this we first import all these things basically data sets torch vision data sets uh we import transform basically which is used to convert our image to tensor and we import matplotlib.py plot to plot the images we get the training data as so and here the parameters are basically set to download the download the data fashion ms data um, we say that this is training data so we set the train parameter to true and transform uh, is set to two set to tensor to basically convert the image to tensor similar similar thing we do for test data only difference being we set the train to false as this is test data so i have downloaded the data here so the labels as i had mentioned are so so this ob this particular data set contains these particular objects let's just try to print and visualize what this data set actually has so these are the different objects in the data set to write a data loader for this data set we can do like so to the data loader we provide the data training data that we had data that we had created we give a batch size and we provide shuffle equals to true as this is trained data loader for the test data loader we explicitly provide the shuffle equals to false yeah we can get one item out of the data loader using the next and iter method and here we see that we out, after we have the data, we have defined the data loader we get the we get one training feature we get the training features and training labels to see that what is the shape of training features and training labels that we get out of our data loader um, we see that the feature shape and label shape is as follows so feature shape is 64 1 28 28 so to interpret this the 64 corresponds to the batch size that we have mentioned here sorry yeah the batch size that we have mentioned here this one corresponds to the number of color channels so since this is a black and white image this is one so if this would have been a data set with rgb images this value here would have been 3 and this 28 cross 20 28 28 represent basically the size of the image okay so moving on to a custom image data set so for most of the problem questions that we have homework uh, homework part 2 we be get, get, getting custom data sets and we cannot use any uh, data sets that we get out of the box from torch vision as such right so here for 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 the demonstration purpose we have created a small data set with training images and training labels so we have picked 10 images from the fashion ms data set and created a 
array of images and we have saved it in a numpy file like so and we have correspondingly saved a corresponding we have saved the corresponding labels uh, in a labels.npy file okay so to define the custom image data set uh, what are the arguments so again these things remain the same init function len function get item so inside init function we have loaded the image numpy file that we have created here in the image labels we have loaded the image la uh, labels numpy file that we have created above len function gives the length of the data set which is set dot image labels the length of the labels essentially get item as before as like before we return the uh, image and label at a given index right. one extra new thing that we see here is a collate function so collate function can be used when we want to do some extra operations on a batch that we have created so uh, extra operations by extra operations i mean that uh, that depends on use case so in this example we'll be padding all the uh items in a batch with zeros uh padding the pad, padding the borders basically with zeros so uh that we get the batch we unpack the batch and we pad it with zeros so here we have set constant values equals to zero and then we return the batch again so let's just run this and see whether this collate function works fine and whether our uh, custom data set works fine so okay so uh, next we create a instance of the custom image data set class and to this we pass the image numpy file and the labels.numpy file as mentioned above we create a dictionary of uh, arguments that we want to pass to the data loader so here we have passed batch size shuffle and one new parameter that we've passed is collate function. Now, since we have defined the collate function in our data set class, we, we have to give it in this fashion, the collate function. Uh, then we define the train, uh, train data loader, like so. So uh, upon running, uh, so we can get, get one of the items from the data loader and we can see that whether uh, we are actually uh, whether the collate function that we have written here um, works fine or not. So we can actually see the output here, but let's just run it once again. So yeah, so we see that the, the image 28 cross 28 image that we had earlier is now padded with zeros on all the boundaries. So yeah, essentially in this collate function, we can do any extra operations that we want to do on the items that are inside a batch. Uh, that is it for the custom in data set and data loaders part. Uh, we have also added some references for uh, NumPy read and save, pandas read and save, and PyTorch data set and data loader. Please go through this and yeah, that will be helpful. Thank you.